or recite or rehearse or repeat. And our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being an ummi, he says, ma ana biqare. There's a testimony that he can't read, he's telling. He said, look, ma ana biqare. He said, I'm not learned. So the angel of God commands him a second time, iqra. Again he pleads, he says, ma ana biqare. He's terrified. The third time the angel of God says, Iqra bismi rabbi kalladhi khalaq. So read in the name of the Lord and cherisher who created. Now he grasps that what he was required to do was to repeat. Because this Arabic word Iqra, I'm given to understand, means to read, to recite, to repeat, to re rehearse, to repeat. And he repeated the words. Iqra bismi rabbi kalladhi khalaq. Read in the name of the Lord and cherisher who created. Khalaq al insana min alak. Say, he who created man from a mere cloud of congealed blood. So he said, Khalaq al insana min alak. Say, Ikra wa rabbuka al akram. So read, and the Lord is most bountiful. So he said, Ikra wa rabbuka al akram. Say, Allah zi allama bil kalam. He who taught the use of the pen. So he said, Allah zi allama bil kalam. Say, Allah mal insana ma'alam ya'alam. He says, taught man that which he knew not. So he said, Allah mal insana ma'alam ya'alam. As soon as the angel departed, he is terrified, sweating all over. He runs home some three miles south to his dear wife, Ummul Mumineen Khadija Dul Kubra, and he says, cover me up, cover me up. When he gets out of his excitement, he explains to her what he had seen and what he had heard. But from that day onwards, he didn't go back to the mount. This is his example. He didn't go back anymore. No more. Finished. With Ghare Hira, Jabal al Nur, finished. What is he doing? He's in the marketplace. He's in the bazaar. Soup, soup. He's in the bazaars. What is he doing? He's accosting people. So, Salaam Alaikum. So, Wa Alaikum Salaam. Say, Akhi, where you come from? He says, Yaman. He says, You know, Allah has revealed to me that He is but one Allah and I'm His messenger. Another man, Salaam Alaikum. So, Wa Alaikum Salaam. Say, Akhi, where you come from? He said, Yathrib, Ul Madina. He said, you know, Allah has revealed to me that he's but one Allah and I'm his messenger. Like a madman. Little wonder they call him Majnoon. Allah had to testify. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi Majnoon. He said, by the grace of thy Lord, your companion is not mad or possessed. They're thinking he's mad. But he's doing the job, his master's job. This is where you and I are supposed to be. Allah tells us, لَكَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا So most certainly in the Apostle of Allah, you have the best example. This is the example He set us. You and I are supposed to stand in the marketplace, proclaiming the unity of God. All the mushriks are abounding around you. Call them. He said, Rama is God, it's a la sharika lak. So Krishna is God, it's a la sharika lak. So Jesus is God, it's a la sharika lak. So Buddha is God, it's a la sharika lak. This is your job, my job. But I know you are terrified. <laughs> you are terrified. Me too. I'm telling you, it's a terrifying thing. You know, today nobody will stone you. Wallah, if you did that, nobody will hurt you physically. Then what are we afraid of? Of ridicule. What will people say? So Didar is gone off his rocker. Didar is mad. The Sheikh is mad. Dr. Billah is mad. Yes. We are afraid of that. You know that? We are terrified. People will call us mad. Thinking maybe you had a little tipsy. You might have taken something to drink. Or have taken some drugs. Then look at him. <laughs> this man standing in the marketplace in the street corner shouting. Allahu Akbar, shouting, La Sharika Lak, is mad. We are terrified of that. I said, you know, there is another way. You can get out of the difficulty. We discovered it. You see, necessity is the mother of invention. Necessity. You want to do something? Then you find ways and means. You know, I can't do it. I can't stand there in the marketplace. The nearest I got to that was in Mombasa. At a place called Mombo Tayari. People who know Mombasa, they might remember. There's a bus stop. I went and delivered lectures in the, in, in the, market, in, 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 in the bus stop. On a, on, on, on a drum. I stood on a drum and with a mic in my hand, I started lecturing. Because the people there, they were doing that, that kind of thing. It encouraged me. But in Durban, I, can, I can't. In London, I can't do it. 
I did it there because it looked like everybody was mad like me, so it didn't matter. I said the second best thing. I said necessity is the mother of invention. We invented an idea. He said, look, you know, today we are able of capturing these jinns. Jinns. You know, old people, they talk about, you know, making, we say, tabe. You know, controlling jinns. That you can call them and make them to do things. Like Aladdin is a wonderful lamb. You rub the lamb and the jinn comes along and you tell him what to do for you. That kind of people, you know, there's jinns under your control. These modern jinns, TV stations, radios, TVs, TVs, monitors, VCR. They are jinns under your control. I said, use them, man. You can't do it yourself. So we said, look, I'll show you. It is so easy. Look, in Durban, a country in South Africa, you know the land of apartheid, a racist country. Very oppressive. The whole world this is like the polecat of the world, stinking. That nation stinks. My nation stinks. But that nation gives me this freedom. Look at this. It's given me that freedom in the streets, in the shops, in the bazaars. Look what I'm doing. I put the monitor in the window. <laughs> you know, 24 hours a day, I can make it to do the work. Be that is talking. 10 hours a day, 20 hours a day. The machine, I make the machine to do the job. The jinn under our control. I say, use him, man. We are using him. Look. And nobody objects. Nobody says, D that is mad. Nobody says, because I'm not there. But I'm doing the job in the marketplace. That's outside. It's outside because inside the place is full. This is another picture of the outside, Muslims and non-Muslims, they're listening to the message. The message of they're getting entertained. And they're receiving the message. Inside the shop, inside, people sit in comfort. People sit in comfort and watch inside, the same thing. We have a monitor inside the shop, we have a monitor outside. When the place inside is full, they say, let them watch outside. Look, there's so many ways of killing a cat, if you want to. Look at it. Then in that color conscious country, racist country, we use the masjid as a bait. You know, Allah baited Hazrat Musa with a fire. So we bait these people to come to the mosque. What for? They think they'll see, come and see something nice and funny in the mosque. They don't know the difference between a mosque and a temple. So when we say visit the largest mosque in the southern hemisphere, they think it's a temple. This is another name for a temple, a synonymous term for a temple, a Hindu temple. So they think they'll see all the monkey gods and elephant gods and snake gods all lined up. One English lady on a world tour, when she came into the masjid and when we explained to her things, she said, you know, I expected to find a funny oriental museum a la carte. Meaning that a monkey got for Monday, an elephant got for Tuesday, a snake got for Wednesday, all the gods lined up. But instead, she says, I found the truth. Another Africana lady, the ruling race, she brings her daughters during the school holidays. And she looks around the mosque and she is disappointed. What she came looking for? She says, where are the cows? You know, cows, bakara, <laughs> milking cows, cows. I said, madam, have you lost your cows? She said, no, no, no. I promised to show them to my daughters. I said, madam, you have come to the wrong place. So she said, but I promised them. I said, madam, is that my fault? You promised to show cows in the mosque? I said, no, no, no. You, we, you can see cows, my people, my people. Wallah, they are my people. I said, Namgeni Road, a little left couple of kilometers away from the masjid. In Amgeni Road is the largest temple in South Africa. And you'll see everything that you want to see. Cows, monkeys, elephants, snakes, everything. My people, they look like me, speak the same language. They have the same surnames like me. You know that? Morarji Desai. You heard the name? He was the prime minister of the largest democracy in the world. He's my maternal uncle. Mamu, we call him. He drinks his own urine six to eight ounces every day. That's my nation. I'm not ashamed. 
See, Allah took me out of it. I'm proud of that. Some Arabs, you know, alhamdulillah, they came to my part of the country and they spoke to my people. They came to do business. And in the process, my ancestors, they said, these are good people. We also like to be one of you. They said, very easy. Give your hand. So my ancestors gave the hand and they became Muslim. Had it not been for the Arabs, the urine of the cow, I would still be sprinkling on myself. Yes. I said, therefore, my father, every time we met an Arab, as a young boy, he shook hands and he kissed the hands. And I also kissed every Arab's hand. My father was reminding me, he says, look, had it not been for these people, we would be where our cousins are, still. So, they're looking for cows in the mosque. They're looking for statues in the mosque. It's an opportunity, God sent opportunity to explain to them. There is no better place than to deliver the message than in the masjid. So, we make the masjid as an attraction. Here, 